uh, the DOH is confirming that a 38-year-old female Chinese patient under investigation, or PUI, is positive for the novel coronavirus. Sonny Angara tested positive for COVID-19. Philippine said, Senator Sonny Angara says he has tested positive yet again for COVID-19. Today is a very special topic and I'm glad that our guests agreed to share with us the ex their experience in the family. We all hear tips on how we can get, not get COVID. But what happens if somebody in your family really get COVID? Ano ba dapat mong gawin? You know, people might be panicking and stuff thinking it's the end of the world. It's not. So with us today is super mom of three. Welcome, Ms. Tutsi Angara. Hi, Tutsi. Everyone, thanks for inviting me. Hi. To Haven't Thank seen you in forever, but at least Thank nice to see you here. I know, yeah, it's been a, it's been a, a worse couple of five months, right? Everybody that's happening, they really know what's happening talaga. How, and, how are you guys? How, how have you both been doing? Well, of course, everybody knows what happened to our family. Um, but now, you know, we're doing good. Um, I think we're treating every day like a gift. So, uh, iba na talaga the mindset of our family right now. So, it's, we're doing good and grateful every day. And how are you so guys? So, the kids are back in school? Well, the kids are not back in school yet. I think my daughter, yeah, my daughter is doing like a little bit of summer online classes. And um, my little boy, Javier, is just doing um, just music, musical classes online, not yet back in school. Okay, that's good. Us, we're also rethinking the school thing because, of course, we don't want to put the kids into a physical school. We're thinking of homeschooling them, but, you know, I think it's such a struggle. Anyway, um, yeah. us, we're okay. We're trying to uh, get by with the new normal. But, you know, tell us about what happened because, you know, it was news, but People don't really know what the background is. Well, it all started when, um, so there was COVID, right? Uh, in the Philippines. Yes. And we, we really didn't know people who had it. Um, and then sometime mm -hmm. um, early March, Sunny started to develop symptoms. So uh, I okay. think he had a cough. He had a cough and he had a fever. And of course, me being the usual um, positive self, I was like, oh, okay, just take care of yourself. But Sunny, I think this is really key for, for all families. Even with just minor symptoms said, I'm going to quarantine myself from you guys already. And I said, but baka naman, I said, baka naman we're overreacting. Maybe you don't have to. And he said, you know what? We're not going to regret anything if we quarantine. If it's not COVID, great. But what it what if what if it is? So on the second day of his cough and his fever, he already transferred to a different room. And then he was also very strict with the kids. And he didn't even mm -hmm. know that he was exposed to anyone with COVID, like no history at all. Like he he didn't know anyone that he was in touch with. So he was, for me nga, that time, he was being extra cautious. But mm -hmm. it came to a point that um, I think five days after the symptoms and it was getting worse, he said, I think it's time for me to get tested. And then, but from okay. the time, from the time he got the symptoms, from from the day he got tested, talagang he was already really no one was allowed to enter the room that he was in except me. But I was also very careful, but not extra careful yet, like no masks or anything. Mm -hmm. And then from the day he got tested, it took I think eleven days to get the results. But he oh was my god. <laughs> But that was the time now. It was so hard to even get a test. Yeah. And there was only one testing facility that could actually um, do it. And in those 11 days, it was getting worse. So parang we were like, mm -hmm. what's going on? Um, then that time already, he was already saying, Tutsi, change my utensils. So that's when I really became a little bit over, uh, like really very cautious. Like no one could enter his room if you weren't wearing a mask and um and face shields. He had his separate utensils and separate set of plates. The glasses were marked. Um, in the kitchen, there were two kinds of sunnies and an ours. So para to make sure that there's no mix of um, mix of food or really even his towels were different. His The place where they would wash his clothes would be different. So it was that kind of um, cautiousness. Na. And then when the results came out positive, 
um, it was also at the same time that he was already feeling really bad. And then um, the chest x-ray showed that there was pneumonia in his lungs. So that's when he, he checked himself into the hospital. Mm, okay. So my question is, in your family, it was only Sonny who tested positive, right? Um, yes, the first time, because that was the time that it was so scarce. Like, it was so mm -hmm. difficult to, to actually get a test. And since he was the only one who had the, who had the symptoms, symptom, he was the only one who got tested that time. But okay. uh, second time, he got tested and he was positive. We all had to take the test because the doctor said, guys, you weren't careful anymore. Of course, but he, he already got yeah. well. And then when he, and then we were already interacting like a normal family. And then mm -hmm. when he tested positive, the doctor said, all of you have to get tested. And thank God, none of us still got it from him. So That's like, like you, you, sorry. sorry. No, people oh, are yeah, teaching start. and parang our family though, what did we do or what did we drink? Because none of us got it, not even the helpers, not the drivers. Like all of us were really parang protected from, from him. That's right, you know. But you know, you mentioned that you separated the utensils, separated the clothes, you were entering with the mask. What other steps did you have to take to keep them on your family? safe because your the whole family was negative it's only sunny was positive even if he had it twice yes um well you know we really doubled up i do i'm not endorsing this but we took immune pro which is the very strong vitamin c with zinc the vitamins and i asked everyone in the house to take it twice a day even the household help okay and i think honestly i really attribute that to to attribute our um, immune system to that. So we took Immune Pro. We had thieves. You know, uh, I don't know if you guys are interested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do, I do. YL also. <laughs> you know, like I, there was thieves, um, this, uh, diffusers everywhere. So antiviral. And then we also mm -hmm. had like a, a, a disinfection machine, the infrared all over, para it kills viruses. So you know, at that point, Janet, we weren't even sure if it was working. We were just doing mm -hmm. everything. Kahit yeah. patong, patong, you're not sure anymore if it's really effective but just to be sure we we did all that right that so this disinfecting machine the thieves diffusers the immune pro and um and i put onions all, all around the house so onions all around the house onions. So there's this huge onions right white onions yeah. i sliced it into, put it all around the house even in sunny's room because someone told me that it um, absorbs viruses. You know what? Okay, this is, I don't know if, all around, in two days, the onions remained white all around okay. the house. In Sunny's room, it turned black. <laughs> so I really feel like there's something there because I really saw the difference of, so I said, you know what? Whatever people tell me, because we were getting so many calls, right? From mm -hmm. doctors, from, from mga people, the Eastern medicines. I followed everyone. <laughs> I just followed everyone's advice. But that's right, uh, the onions. They said if you're sick, you put the uh, sliced onion on your foot and then put socks. Yes. Talagang it will absorb the whatever bacteria or virus in your body. But I believe that. So when Sunny got uh, admitted, na, so how, how, was he alone? How were you able to go there? How was that experience? Oh, wow. That was really, really very hard. Because, uh, you know, as a wife... um. Sunny has always been the strong one in our family and even between us in our marriage. So to see him go through this was really very challenging for me because parang, parang usually he's in control of everything. So it was very, very difficult talaga. But at the same time, the most difficult part of it was, a, was not being able to be there for him. Because mm -hmm. you cannot touch each other. So imagine when he got the results na positive. I couldn't even hug him. I couldn't even like, you know, like even touch his arm because he said, don't don't get close to me. Um, mm -hmm. So he had to, it, this was so painful. He was saying goodbye to us. And then we were there so far from him as he walked outside our door. And he was going to check himself into the hospital because the doctors were telling us COVID is completely um, tra a traitor. You can okay. be free today, and then in two days you crash. So just to be safe, at the same time, his chest x-rays were getting worse. Um, that's the reason why he checked in, because the chest x-rays show that 
the pneumonia was getting worse and getting deep into his lungs. So that was the most painful part. But what made it easier was, of course, the kids. You had to be strong for the kids. And even Sunny told me, Tutsi, walang bawal bumigay. You have okay. to be strong for them. You have okay. to be honest, but always put a positive spin when you talk to them because we're we're very hopeful. So you have to make sure um, they keep that same sentiment. Mm, that's right. That's a good uh, it's a good way to put it for the kids, though. Because, of course, at the end of the day, it's very hard to explain to them. So when he got test, when he got positive again, was what was the f was there any factor? Did he get uh, did he got in touch with somebody? With COVID again, or it was just his system uh, being susceptible to the virus once uh, more. Well, no. Uh, they said that the uh, when you test positive again, it could be particles or what you call remnants of the virus that are still in your tissues. So, okay. and then um, and the time when he got it again, there was no, there was not enough scientific evidence to show whether he was. Um, he was still contagious or not. Because it's such a new virus. That's why that's that was also a major difficulty. It's not as if like when you get the flu or diabetes. This one, nobody knows. Even the doctors were not sure. So we just had to, again, he had to quarantine again for 14 days just to be sure that he wasn't contagious. But yeah, yeah. after a while, I think uh, WHO came out with scientific evidence that you're not contagious. It's just remnants of the virus that are still in your tissues. So going back to the time now, so Sunny went to the hospital already. And then how, how long did he stay in the hospital? I think two, two weeks. He was there two for two weeks. Five days in the, in the emergency room because there was no space. And I think all the hospitals were full. So for five days, he, he was in the emergency room. And then another nine days in a regular room. But uh, what were the what were his treatments during the time he was hospitalized? Because <clears throat> at um, that time, there's nothing proven anything to do it, to do to do with it. Correct. When he was hospitalized, mm -hmm. we there was something called the COVID regimen, right? So it's a it's a one antibiotic and then this drug called hydroxychloroquine. Mm -hmm. But so when we took it at the time, they said it's very tough on your heart. So I think that's the complication that that's why you can't just take it at home or you can't just take it anywhere because there are complications with the heart. And then so he took that. It's a very strong drug. But what's so queer is I think just a few weeks ago, WHO said it's not allowed to give it. Oh. Like all of a sudden it's not, um, they don't recommend it. So that's why up to now, I think a lot of the doctors are still very confused about because it also depends on what kind of other ailments you have or your other or how your other parts of your body are functioning. So you can't it's not like a parang COVID regimen for all. It really depends on how strong you are, how strong your heart is, your kidneys and everything else. So I guess they're more or less uh, just uh, addressing the symptoms of the of what the patient is giving out so what are the other key learnings that you had during this experience what were like oh my god if i didn't go through this i wouldn't learn this well um i think in terms of in terms of family and spirituality you really have to stay strong for for the patient because and you have to understand that he's feeling very alone um and because you're not allowed, he has no visitors, so he only talks to nurses who are in complete PPEs. And there is that stigma, whatever it is, to all families that get it, understand that there will be that stigma. Uh, relatives and friends and even neighbors. I mean, we had some neighbors who were asking us, when are they going to get out of the village? I mean, there's that fear of really getting getting close or getting slightly um, slightly near the families involved. But just understand, instead of feeling upset about it, just understand that they're just afraid. But at the same time, you have to really keep it close. Like, keep it strong talaga between you and your kids. Kasi, and you have to stay spiritual. And uh, you have to find ways to, to, to get the patient to feel that he, he's loved. So every day, we'd send him, 
every day, huh? as in yeah. old love letters, like mm -hmm. colorful um, pictures every day, even if he had no gana to eat, we'd send him his favorite food every day, just so that he feels completely loved while he's going through this, because there's a lot of loneliness talaga on their, on their end. And then on our end, of course, when you're afraid, um, you really have to turn to prayer because you have no other choice but to find peace in your heart through prayer together. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, Jeanette, if you don't mind me sharing that, parang even the way we parented now is so different. Like before, oh, guys, work hard. Um, um, have that grit. Never give up. Now, parang our lessons now to our kids are whatever happens in the world, whatever whatever um whatever future you choose please make sure it's to help humanity parang it's the fo the focus became from me to others diba because okay. that's really what we realized from all this and then wow. also sorry to add quality time also diba we're always talking about quality time mm -hmm. but this one this last 3 months have been quantity and it's been better than than ever. Parang you, we really got to know them, got to know them completely, their souls, got to eat with them. Parang, parang this really got us closer as a family. Wow. Malaki talaga yung change, no? Kasi I, I think a lot of families now are feeling the burnout of being 24-7 with their family. But sometimes we forget when we were working hard before covid we will always say we needed time with our kids now that it was given to us parang we didn't want to take advantage of it right yeah and and you know parang um despite people having looking at us like there was some stigma there were still a lot of kind souls out there uh, like like neighbors would just leave food outside our gate because they heard that people stopped wanting to deliver this to us at some point because everyone knew that Sunny had it so like we had no water we had no um toilet paper and and we just one day we just opened our gate and there was just so much grocery items so even the kids felt that they felt like mom so many kind people out there and we don't even know where it came from so that's wow. one thing also that really our family is parang super grateful for and that's what we realized that you know people out there they really want to help each other. You just have to give them the opportunity. Oh, that's nice. I because I remember I texted you about it also. Because I saw your post. <laughs> yeah, I saw your post. Na you know, some of your neighbors wanted to uh, get you out of the village. I think you know a lot of people were really scared, and I think people are still scared up to now. Uh, and you know, because I guess there's a lot of uncertainty on how to deal with it. There's really nothing. To, you know, there's really nothing that can cure it yet, or you know, there's no state of. And sometimes we get this hospitals are full, but it's just really scare tactics. Now, now moving forward, now that you know your ordeal is done, what do you think? Uh, what are you guys doing to take the to go it back to normal as a family? Well, actually, um, in terms of getting back to normal. This is the new normal, right? Everyone's saying it, yeah. it's normal because we're not going to relax. I mean, our household is as strict as it was in March again because of the second wave. Mm -hmm. And I think more people have gotten it and we're more susceptible to actually ha getting it in our in our household. So uh, in terms of that, we are really, this is already the new normal. Like we're very strict about disinfection, even leaving the house, I think, my kids have not left since March 11. Um, oh, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I, they only went out once. I think to to get to go to the dentist. Like they really don't leave if not necessary because it's it's. I think to all families out there, we have to know that it's still, it's a major risk and it's still a threat. Mm -hmm. But keep your guard up all the time. But if someone gets it. There are, um, I think the doctors and the nurses, I have to say the doctors here are very good. They're maasikaso talaga. And they really, they really um, know how to reassure you that everything will be okay. So not to worry, you're in good hands. And, and, um, and of course, prayers work. Because I, I, we know a lot of friends who 
who were in the ICU for a month. Wow. And they, they were already confessing. And then all of a sudden, a miracle happened. So there's always um there's always miracles. You just really have to, you just really have to, you know, leave it up to God. Okay. So I'll just summarize our learnings now for today. Uh, so if somebody does get COVID in your family, I think the first thing you need to do is again. We cannot stress enough quarantine. So like what Tutsi yeah. did with their household, household, uh, separate the utensils, separate the clothes, you know, just really mark them, uh, disinfect, be vigilant. And also, don't forget, if somebody gets COVID, you need to make them feel love because at the end of the day, they're going to be lonely and alone in the hospitals. And then if for your family, for your kids, make sure that you tell them the truth, but be positive about it. And most of all, the most important is always pray. So thank yeah. you, Tutsi, so much. You know, I was getting goosebumps with your cuento. Yeah. Because I think for moms, that's really just one, it's a scary, I know, it's a scary journey. It diba? is. Yes, yes. But, yeah. you know, I learned so many things about you. Uh, Immunopro, the onions. <laughs> I'm going to do that. <laughs> And a positive spirit, right? Oh yes, <laughs> fighting. And then, yeah, <laughs> and then, um, if if I if you don't mind, just to add lang, it's and then you were talking about the new normal. I was telling my kids, you know, now, um, we're really going through super duper duper tough times, and we're all given a chance to renew our lives. And so, like, um, instead of grit and hard work, parang now it's a generous heart, kind speech, compassion. That's really what's going to renew us all. Yes, money's not everything. I think for me, the key learnings in COVID is there, there's really a lot of excess during pre-COVID times that you thought was important. Yes, a lot of things that we were so preoccupied with that we didn't realize were, were not important at the end of the day. That's right. Again, thank you so much. I hope everybody learned something. Uh, we, have, we are going to be giving away some headwear items, so just please write down uh the what the learnings that you've got from this episode write it in the comments below we will send you a voucher from headwear so that's headwear and three boo sandals once again tutsi thank you so much for thank joining you, us thank you. thank you take care thank you so ladies and gents i hope you learned something important this episode i think this was one of the best episodes that we had i've learned so much in preparation of what can happen in your family so once again this has been janet ipapotwason and you are with me at chick chats your best life in bullet points bye <laughs>